And good day. Well, for those of you that have uh, wondered where I've been at, I have been writing books, as I said, when I signed off about a year ago. Uh, got a little more time on my hands now. Wanted to go ahead and start up with this again on a uh, once a week or bi-weekly basis so we'd have something out there for videos on World of Warplanes as I noticed that nobody has ever taken up the mantle. All right, so today I went and repurchased the uh, one uh, the uh, P-51D because I was always having to go into... Uh, tiers five six seven to finish up my dailies and i got a little bit old the d is something i understood very well uh, historically it was perhaps the plane that changed the entire air war in the uh, uh, western front because it had a range of 1500 miles which gives it a radius of 750 miles which meant it could go all the way to berlin and back from great britain and that allowed the daylight uh, bombing campaigns to take uh, place. It also allowed the fighters, once they were cut loose from the bombers, to go ahead of the fighters and start strafing and bombing airfields, um, catching uh, groups of uh, Luftwaffe uh, bomber interceptors while they were still forming up or catching them en route to the bomber streams. And literally changed the face of the war now in america and obviously i'm an american by my accent it holds an almost mythical status with us uh, a it's just being a beautiful aircraft and b uh, for his role in the war now it does raise the question whether any other aircraft that were as good in actuality well yeah there were i mean there's no one of the more irritating things on the internet is the uh, magic german juice anything made by uh, germany during world war ii was naturally the be best and brightest of anything that was out there and there was no army that was even comparable to it ad nauseum all right do i subscribe to it no they made lots of errors that's why they got beat and they should have never started the war in the first place because in the long haul they could not maintain it, which is the main reason they got beat. Um, <clears throat> but you do have the myths surrounding this aircraft, the Spitfire, the, uh, the Zero in the early war. And historically, no, the... Falk Wolf uh, 190D was every bit of the aircraft that this was. I don't know about its range, but I doubt it was as long range because there's no reason for it to be, but it could certainly compete with the Mustang. Nor was the Mustang the most maneuverable fighter out there. He could hang mostly with the uh, ME 109s, BF 109s. But what it did have was the ability to fight well at altitude. It had the ability to be considerably faster than most of the aircraft in its time. The uh, 109D or 190D was not the most common aircraft out there. There was still it was mostly a Messerschmitt uh, battle late war. And the Mustang had lots of answers to the ME-109 late variants. It was better armed, for one thing. It was faster. And I do mean a good 20, 30 knots, or 20, 30 mile per hour faster. The 50s were, uh, gave a longer firing time, and there were plenty enough for any German fighter or any German bomber that the... Uh, uh, that they were running across. But was it a perfect aircraft? No. If you didn't know how to use your trim, trim pads, uh, you know, your good right arm quickly became your good left leg. You had to use, uh, you, you either learned how to use your turn controls or by the time you got out of there, you'd have to be helped out of the cockpit. So it had some issues, but 
it literally changed the the uh, tide of the war. So that's why it's so famous. Now, in the game wise, it's a prisoner, a very effective fighter. And one of the things that really does change it is the premium incendiary ammo, because the 650s in this game are not the equivalent of 420s. But with the incendiary ammo, you can really get out there um, up to 1,800 feet and deliver a pretty effective uh, barrage. And it's capable of taking out, well, you just saw me take out a GA. It will do for any, uh, any fighter that you're going to run across. There are some things you do not want to do, like come across a J7W series, J7W1, I guess. But other than that, First off, you do a considerable amount of damage. The second thing is you do a lot of catching aircraft on fire. So if you don't take it out, a lot of times you will be coming around for a pass and it will blow up from the fire anyway. One of the things it is really good at is at taking out anything high altitude. You're far more maneuverable than the P-38s, the... Uh, you know, any of the high altitude heavy bomber or heavy fighters, and it does a good job on bombers too. And there's very little up there that uh, can compete with it up there. The in this game, the ME uh, 109 G is uh, every bit of the competitor that this is. In reality, not so much. But, yeah, there's a game. Can't get too hung up on it. And you'll notice even the Spitfire, I was able to get hang with them with one pass, but, you know, I'm not going to get in a turning contest, so I simply outran him and go around. Now, people will make arguments about, in history, that the Spitfire was the better fighter. And in a pure interceptor, point defense sort of role, they'd be absolutely correct. However, you could take a Mustang, dogfight over a Spitfire's airfield, and come back and you could not do that with a Spitfire you'd have a heck of a lot of trouble getting a, a very long way in the Spitfire was really designed as a defensive fighter didn't have the range to compete with the role that this was put into and that's why the RAF um, got them in some numbers Now, people can make whatever comments they want to, but you know, Solon said uh, that quantity has a quality all of its own. Well, they're right. And range has a quality all of its own. Now, it doesn't show up in the game, but that was why this aircraft was so successful. And here you can see it's a great combination of turning capability. If you, you know, equip it with the uh, guns, it's a great aircraft. Good firepower. The incendiary damage makes up for the fact that you're dealing with machine guns. Speed makes up for the fact that they're not that long ranged. Um, when you get to specialize it, uh, you know, you want to go with the uh, faster engine and anything will keep it turning. Uh, but overall, it's been a spectacular aircraft and performer for me. I highly recommend it as uh, keeping it. Because it's a good competitor in the Tier 7 uh, range where you'll have to go over and over again because of your uh, dailies. So it should be a good aircraft for you. Hope you had fun with this. I have an advertisement coming at the end of this um, as to what I was doing. I was writing books. Uh, if you don't want to see it, please feel free to skip past it. But otherwise, if you want to know what the heck I've been doing, that will tell you. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.
Okay, so for those of you who wanted to know what the heck I've been doing with my time, uh, this is it, actually. Uh, I uh, rewrote an old book that I had put out in about uh, 2013 and then proceeded to write the sequel to it and then have them copy edited and go back and forth with that and to publish them on Amazon in both the ebook and the Kindle formats. And it was kind of an interesting process because I put the first book out and, you know, you write on this, that, and the other thing in the meantime, and then you go back and look and go, oh, no, I really did that. So anyway, I ended up taking sections out of the first book, rewriting other sections, putting new content in, so forth and so on, until I got it where I wanted it to do, uh, put it back into the... Uh, and I use First Editor, by the way, for those of you that are interested in such things. And they did the copy edit for me. And I strongly suggest that if you write books that you get them copy edited because being the writer, you will overlook all sorts of things. They won't. So there you go with that. Anyway, I got that done, and then I wrote the sequel to it, which will be coming up here shortly, which is the first one, of course, is The Prince of Change. And the next one is a, uh, uh, called A Changing Tide. To give you an idea of what the covers look like. You can find these on Amazon. Just search for The Prince of Change, Jeff W. Long, and it will come up. Or you can go to, um, and similarly, you can go to look for A Changing Tide, and you will find that as well. Um, then that's the second series. The second series picks up where the first book uh, leaves off, of course, and it uh, is about half again as long. And the style, will ch the writing style didn't change, but the plot changes. So if you're a Robert Jordan fan and you're used to the fact of interweaving plot lines from various characters' perspectives and everything, uh, weaving around a central core, that is very much the style that the second book is written on. It's the first one is more of a linear hero's journey. Uh, so in any case, you should find that um, fairly good. The test readers and beta readers I've read to, uh, I've, I've read it and thought that it was a pretty uh, darn good book. The problem that I'm running into is there are hundreds of new books hitting Amazon every week. So I wanted to take a moment, use my platform for what it was worth, and to say, hey, yeah, they're out here. I uh, wanted to um, let you all know that they're here. If you had any interest, by all means, please go and buy yourself a copy. It is in both the Kindle and the paper book format, so whichever you prefer. And I'll leave links at the bottom of the video uh, for your um, use if you so see fit. Um in any case, I wanted to thank you very much for this. I uh, don't tend to make a habit of, of it, but I wanted to let you know that they were out here, and I will be doing this once a week from this point on. Thank you very much, and have a good day.